Welcome to Real Estate and Taxes with Lakshay. I will be helping you minimize your taxes. So let's get started. My name is Lakshay. Thank you for joining in. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about how to apply for the new HST rebates. What are the types of two HST rebates you can get or your clients can get? How can we basically, what are the two types and how can we get started? So first things first, my name is Lakshay. I have an accounting practice and the HST filing deadline is coming up. So if you haven't filed your HST yet, March 31st is the last day. And as a realtor or as a personal real estate corporation owner, if your year end is December 31, 2022, you should be filing your HST no later than three months after the year end. So this week, I wanted to highlight, since it's the HST deadline, I wanted to tie it back to the HST and what are some of the types of HST, how we can apply for it and how you can take advantage of it in today's market. So without further ado, let's get started. What is an HST rebate? Most of you know that whenever you buy a pre construction home, the builder will ask you the question, are you buying it for your principal residence or are you buying it for your investment property? If you're buying it for your principal residence, at the time of closing, the builder will basically not ask you for additional HST out of pocket because behind the scenes, they go back to the CRA and claim the HST themselves. But if you're buying it as an investment property, what the builder would technically do is they will ask you as the new owner to kind of apply for the HST rebate and then claim it back. What do I mean by that? So let's get started. It's called what is an HST rebate. Ontario HST rebate is basically meant for new homes and it is for any home that is built by the builder. Even if you have a you know substantial renovation that you have done on a new house where you know you have spent excessively high amount of HST, even then you can technically get a rebate for the HST that you have paid. How can we get that? We're going to be talking about that in this slideshow. So as per the new HST eligibility, you must have purchased either a constructed new home, a new condominium, you've built a house, contracted someone to build a house, substantial renovation to your house, or maybe it could be related to added a major addition to a home, rebuilt a home that is destroyed by the fire, buy shares in a cooperative housing project, or converting a non-residential property into a home. Under all of these criteria, you can technically apply for an HST rebate and get the money back. So without confusing you, we're going to be talking about two HST rebates today. Number one would be the new housing rebate for homeowners. And the second one would be the new residential rental property rebate. So what is the new rental property rebate? This is technically for your investor client. So let's assume you had a client who recently invested in a project where it's a pre-construction project, it's new build. That is the HST rebate you'll be looking at. So the new residential rental property rebate. If you are, let's assume um, in a situation where you've bought it as a principal residence, then you can look at the new housing rebate, which is for the homeowners. So any landlord that buys a new condo or a home for which the first occupant is tenant is eligible for the new residential rental rebate. Just like the name suggests, one is for the homeowners where you are buying it for yourself. And the second one is actually for the rental property rebate, which is for an investor who has technically rented their home. In the new housing rebate, the applicant must intend to acquire the house as a principal residence. So this is not the house where you're going to be not moving in or where you're going to just say that you're going to basically be renting it out. This is technically meant for someone who's moving in and the property should have never been occupied before prior to your purchase. So it's a new home. And if it's not you, it has to be a close relative that is occupying the home at least for one year. So that is how the new housing rebate works. This is the eligibility criteria that you need to qualify before applying and you know getting the money who can claim it both end users as well as investors can claim this hst rebate homeowners that are buying a new home or substantially renovating the home adding a basement to an existing home does not mean a drastical renovation you would technically be adding more washrooms upstairs and you know basically changing the structure of the house in order for to you to qualify for the rebate. Even the individuals who have built a new home for themselves can also, like the custom housing projects that we see a lot of the time, even those guys qualify for the HST that, you know, from the government. They pay the HST when they're constructing it, but they can claim it back at the time as part of the HST rebate programs. 
So how does the HST rebate process work? So if you are, let's assume, buying a new home where you have told that this is going to be an investment property, here's how the breakdown would work. Technically, let's assume the pre-HST house price was 300,000. The federal portion of the HST is 5%, so 5% of it, total is 13%. 5% is related to federal and the remainder is actually related to the Ontario portion. So under 5% of 300,000 works out to 15,000. And on that 15,000, you can claim up until a maximum of 36%, which is 5,400 back. If you're looking at the provincial portion, you have 8% of the same house price, which is $300,000. So 300,000 times 8% works out to 24,000. Can you get back all of the 24,000? The answer is no, they have an upper limit. The upper limit is 75% of the Ontario portion that you have paid, which works out to 18,000. Let's assume the house was valued at 800,000. Can you get back more HST? No, because there's a maximum of 24,000 that you can get back. So total rebate technically works out to 5,400 from the federal portion and 18,000 from the provincial portion working out to 23,400. This would be your total rebate. So just a quick recap, let's assume you bought a $300,000 pre-construction property. On that $300,000 property, you're going to be asked to pay HST because it is your investment property. Now we know HST total is 13%, but the federal portion is 5% and the remainder 8% is the Ontario portion. Both of them have upper limit cap. On the federal portion, you can only get a maximum of $6,300 back. And on the Ontario portion, you can get a maximum of $24,000 back. In this scenario, because the house valued at a very low price, $300,000, you were able to get $5,400 for federal portion and Ontario portion was $18,000. $5,400 plus $18,000 works out to $23,400. That would would be your combined rebate that you would be getting back from the government if you were to buy an investment property today. So once again, we are talking about HST that we basically get back from the government on investment property and how the breakdown works. If the house was valued at 800, 900 or a million dollars, your maximum would still stay at 6,300 plus 24,000. Because on an $800,000 property, this would technically crossing the threshold. So you cannot claim more than this amount. Now looking at the statement of adjustments, a lot of the people are wondering that uh, how would a statement of adjustment look for an investment property that is technically purchased and how, how would the numbers work? So here's an example of an investment property statement of adjustment. In this scenario, what the builder has done is they've basically asked for additional money by the purchaser. They are basically at the time of the closing, they're asking additional $27,150 from the buyer in order to compensate compensate themselves for the HST that they weren't able to get back from the CRA. Remember, this only happens when you're buying an investment property. If you were to buy principal residence, how would the statement of adjustment look? Here's a second example of statement of adjustment where in this scenario, the house price was approximately 823,000. And in this scenario, the builder themselves applied for the rebate and credited the purchaser. The purchaser did not have to pay this at time of closing. In the previous example, you can notice that that basically the purchaser had to foot the bill at the time of closing of 27,000, which they can technically claim back from the government later on. Don't think in the sense that, oh, just because I'm buying an investment property, the cost went up. Because you pay and then you get it back, the net impact is technically the same. You can apply for the rebate for HST and get money back within two months. In this scenario where it was principal residence, you technically do not have to even do any work because the builder behind the scenes goes back to the government government tells them that this purchaser is going to be occupying the house themselves. So do not charge them HST. We will be basically doing the administrative work and the builder will technically be taking care of applying and getting the rebate. You don't have to foot the bill at the time of closing of the additional HST. So now you must be wondering when I apply for the HST, who does it go to? It technically goes to the person who paid the HST. It goes to the either the landlord or the person who have leased the property. It usually takes two months to get to basically file this rebate and then get the money back. And if let's assume you bought the property in 2020 and today is 2023 and you forgot to apply for this rebate, you won't be able to apply for it because the maximum timeline that you can apply for this rebate after closing is approximately approximately two years. So you only have two years in order to apply for this rebate application for HST and you cannot do it after. 
I've had cases where, you know, someone might have forgotten or, you know, they weren't able to apply for the rebate within the two year timeline and the CRA upfront rejected their claim. So they were out of pocket for this big amount of HST. Now, a lot of you guys have, you know, also asked me that um, what happens if we don't tell CRA that this is going to be our uh, principal residence or we don't tell CRA that this is going to be an investment property. What if we just tell them that this is basically our principal residence, so we don't want to be paying HST at the time of closing let the builder do his job and eventually we're we were never going to occupy it and we end up renting it i have seen in cases like this where cra will wait two years and not send any letters and later on after the two year time of claiming this rebate has been closed this window is closed then they send the letter and ask them that when you bought the house you told us that you were going to occupy it now eventually you didn't occupy it so technically you need to pay us the hst rebate that you falsified or claimed when you were buying the house now they had to pay the additional hst out of pocket and with the interest and penalties of course and they weren't even able to claim it back all cra is technically trying to tell you is whenever you're buying a new house tell us are you buying it for principal use or are you buying for investment in both the cases your net impact for hst is exact same then why not tell the truth and the truth is if you're buying it for your personal self there's no hst impact at the time of closing but if you're buying for investment we're gonna charge you hst but claim the entire amount back within two months after you have tenanted the property so be truthful because i've seen this happen people lie and then you know CRA you know comes back to you with interest and penalties what records do you need to keep you need to keep one year lease agreement when you're applying for this hst rebate the agreement of purchase and sale this final statement of adjustments and there's two application forms to apply for this rebate which your accountant or me myself can actually help you to do all claims are subject to cra audit so still keep all of these paperwork handy for seven years because they can come back to you and that kind of wraps up today's presentation thank you once again for joining in we're going to be seeing each other every tuesday at 2 p.m so don't forget to you know add it this meeting to your calendar and we're going to present you with a new topic